Please welcome APAC Director of Policy and Government Affairs, Dr. Marvin Foyer. I am honored to introduce our next guest, Estonian President Kersti Kaljulaid, <clears throat> the first Baltic head of state to speak at the APAC Policy Conference. <clears throat> Estonia is a key strategic partner for both America and Israel. In addition to being a vital NATO ally, Estonia holds a seat on the UN Security Council and, like Israel, is a major power in cybersecurity and innovation. This is not President Kaljulaid's first meeting with APAC. She also hosted an APAC leadership delegation in Estonia in 2018. But today's gathering is certainly her largest. Please join me in welcoming the President of the Republic of Estonia, Her Excellency Kersti Kaljulaid. Good morning. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank Good you. Good morning and wonderful to uh, renew our contacts. You mentioned already the wonderful evening we spent together in Tallinn. I was thinking about this tomorrow, the, the day after. You're always welcome to Estonia. Welcome back. And you mentioned uh, before we started uh, this conversation that uh, your community in, in Tallinn is a, a very special community and uh, their ability to celebrate without fear is something extraordinarily special. Perhaps you could talk about that for a moment. Oh, yes, uh, indeed. It's wonderful that in Tallinn, our Jewish community is proud to have a synagogue in Europe, which is not permanently guarded by any police or military officers, for the reason that there is no need, because, thank you. Because Estonia has a long tradition of honoring the Jewish community. I don't know whether you know, I doubt you know, but in 1924, Estonia was the first country globally who granted cultural autonomy to our Jewish community. And that's why, that's why anti-Semitism can never take root in Estonia. It wouldn't happen, it cannot happen. We've been very pleased to see the improved ties between Estonia and Israel in recent days, and perhaps you could talk a bit about that relationship and where you hope to see Estonian and Israeli relations going. Indeed, first I would like to share with you a very personal relationship I have with Israel. And it has everything to do with politics and women in politics. Because very often, women are congratulated for having taken such an office and being a woman, and you never know whether it's a compliment or an offhanded compliment. <laughs> and then I always tell them that, what do you mean? I mean, the first prime minister, female prime minister in Europe took office the year I was born, and it was in Israel, Gauda Meir, of course, 1969. And indeed, we have really close relations between the two countries. We work together in the cybersphere even more than we geographically work together. Our cooperation stems back to the uh, days when Estonia regained independence, and then, of course, it was not cyber. But it so happened that the Estonian army found it very difficult to uh, find places globally where to buy arms. And uh, the first set came from Israel. Thank you. And of course, a Galil rifle is still the first firearm each and every infantryman in Estonia carries. 
But nowadays, we all know that uh, cyber is as important domain as conventional domains are. And we work really closely in, uh, in the sphere of cybersecurity. We are actually working for the rest of the world in Digital 9, making the world aware of both the opportunities and the risks. And you know why that is? Your country is the country which has so much benefited from digital technologies that it makes up more than 10% of your GDP nowadays related to the technologies. Because you are the creators of technology. Estonia, having only regained independence 30 years ago, was not rich enough to start creating technology, but we had the brain to be quick followers, which now means that we also get 7% of our GDP from new technologies. But this means we promote it, we need to protect it, we need to protect everybody, and this is not only cyber conventional. We need to fight anti-Semitism, racism, misogyny, all what exists in cybersphere. This is our job, this is also where we stand together for the future. That's extremely, uh, extremely impressive, and perhaps you could reflect for just a moment. Estonia is a small country, uh, Israel is a small country, Obviously, we in America are leaders. We're a very, very large country. But how is it that the small countries can be so important in, uh, in contributing uh, to the global uh, struggle against uh, 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 all these threats in the cybersphere? In cyber, of course, we can truly say that it doesn't matter what size a country is. I can tell you that while campaigning for United Nations Security Council seat for first ever time for Estonia for two years, Nobody knew where Estonia is really in this world, but they all knew it's in the cybersphere. They all knew that, and that is a clear sign that actually nowadays geography does not matter anymore. It brings us huge benefits, it carries with it huge risks which we need to be aware of and which we need to really work together in overcoming. Many countries are looking to leapfrog with the use of technology. Many isolated countries and they don't realize that lots of the bad things in this world will come this way closer to them. And we need to protect our emerging digital governance models because Estonia, you know, or maybe you don't know actually, Estonia is a country where all public service runs online. You only cannot get married online. Everything else is online. <laughs> and obviously, this is a target. This is a target. Attacking our sovereignty is possible through cyber means. So of course we need the help of countries like yours, which is a technological leader for us, a quick technological follower, to work together to make sure that we are protected. But not only technically, there is the need for legal space. We need to understand that our analog law, how, as this is how we call the, I mean, the traditional law in Estonia, analog law applies in our cyberspace. And we can protect ourselves as we can protect ourselves in conventional cases. We have to be able to protect ourselves in cyber. And cyber is a, in this sense, changing that we can talk about cyber conventional, which is attacks against systems, which you must know very well. We know it very well. In 2007, Estonia was the first country ever to be attacked by a cyber means. But nowadays, it's a much more complicated animal. It is trying to disrupt our democracies. And we have to be aware of that. And we have to find tools and means to stick together to overcome these risks. Thank you. You mentioned earlier uh, a very great triumph in a way for Estonia to become a, a non-permanent member of the Security Council for a, a two-year term. And we've seen, of course, Estonia as an American ally voting with us frequently, but Estonia also taking more and more steps to uh, defend Israel in the General Assembly. And uh, we anticipate further difficulties, unfortunately, coming down the road. Can we anticipate seeing Estonia, again, continuing this uh, uh, trend of standing with America and standing with Israel at the United Nations. I tell you what, I have a meeting tomorrow in White House with uh, Mr. Kushner. And one of the topics we will be discussing is exactly this. How can we take forward the Middle East peace process? Yes, the proposal he made is diverging from some former proposals. But I mean, the proposals are there to be discussed to, I mean, gain impetus to, to have an invigorated debate. And of course, Estonia, Israel, small, countries who share liberal democratic values 
we start from the same position. We need to make sure that nobody suffers and each and everybody can rely on our common mechanisms of coming to conclusions which will take us further into the Thank future. You. My final question will focus in a way on, uh, on what Estonia is looking for from the United States uh, and from uh, our allies. Uh, you, like Israel, live in a very tough neighborhood. Uh, like you, <laughs> similarity, similarity between the two countries. And uh, Estonia has known over the years uh, a great travail. Um, what do you hope to see from uh, America? What do you hope to see from our allies around the world in helping Estonia to meet its, uh, its, its requirements? First and foremost, we know that our liberal democratic way of life is under threat. Many question it. Many say that alternative models might be better for the future better to protect us from viruses, better to develop artificial intelligence, whatever. This is not true. We need to protect our values. Small countries have nothing but the value union. The only thing we have is our value union with the United States, with like-minded countries. And I think here again we share our views that this is the most important. But to get more practical, because you asked, Estonia is very happy that US has been adamant with our neighbor. This is not acceptable if a big country, a regionally important power like Russia, is not respecting its own signatures under international agreements. This is not acceptable. <laughs> the sanctions policy of the United States is so important. We need to have strategic patience until we resolve the Ukrainian crisis, because the Ukrainian war, which is ongoing, it's not a frozen conflict. This war is happening. People are dying while we are speaking, and it is in Europe. This war we need to resolve with strategic patience, and the US has this strategic patience. We stand together, not only for ourselves, we stand together also for peace in the whole Europe, including Ukraine, and we're not forgetting Georgia. The US is our biggest ally in making sure that they're not forgotten. Madam President, thank you so much for this extraordinary interview and thank you very much for coming to APAC. Thank you.